Welcome on into Sidelines. I'm Drew Patrick. On today's episode, we talk Sprint Football's win against Alderson Brodus. Plus, we talk Field Hockey's weekend, which included a record-tying performance. Welcome back to Sidelines. Let's talk sprint football now. As joining me here at the desk, we have two members of the team, Terrence Quaker and Ian Mapp. Thank you both so much for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. So let's talk about this game this past week. Alderson Brodus is the opponent. Uh, a bit of a later game and kind of just chaos that was going on. So obviously with the three games that day being that middle game, what do you guys kind of have to do in that pregame to really not focus on the chaos? This is also coming right after homecoming, so maybe it's a little easier. Uh, I think the big thing was, I mean, this is my first time uh, being at Mansfield where we played a 3 o'clock game instead mm -hmm. of a, like a 1. Like you said, it was a little bit later in the day, so you couldn't really be on the field as much. You couldn't like warm up as much, but we just kind of preached to the guys all week, you know, just stay focused mm -hmm. and like, you know, whenever that field hockey game is done, just, you know, make sure, you know, everyone locks in and focuses up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just got to, once you get on the field, just got to focus in, warm up as good as possible and get ready to play. And uh, play you guys did. Terrence, uh, over 100 yards. What was working for you on the ground early and often in this game? I think the biggest thing was honestly just the offensive line and my fullbacks just like creating holes. Like, I feel like this game, I probably like my vision was the best it's been. But I mean, some of those holes, I mean, you must could, I feel like you could have fit like a Mack truck to them sometimes. There were some really big holes. But I think what helps too is like <clears throat> when I'm gaining some good yards and obviously Kassid's gaining some good yards. Mm -hmm. So like, they must have to pick and choose, and they just can't key in on one guy. So it, w it was working well this past Saturday. And then on the other side, there were no uh, lanes to yeah. run a, a Mack truck through. And The pride, first of all, the shutout. So how do you feel as a defense, as a defensive unit, to have that goose egg on the scoreboard at the end of that game? It feels great. We've been working for it all season, through every game, and we finally got it. So it's, it's a great feeling. And the only thing that's better than a goose egg on the scoreboard is a negative eight in the rush yards. What was the key for you guys, especially on that line, to constantly be in the backfield? Well, we always preach, like, just working hard. And so with, like, guys like me, we have, like, Chase Moser and Matt Robert. We always just fill the gaps, mm -hmm. stay disciplined. So it's always just, just got to go. Yeah, and it's... It's interesting in this game, specifically on the defensive line for you, that you have, have the benefit of having Chase, who's been an all-conference player on one side, Kayan, who's been an all-conference at multiple different positions. But to have that experience in your first year here, what has that done with your growth and development? It's been great because they're always there to help me in like anything. Like I could always ask them for advice, Chase, Kay, and even like other guys who are also like upperclassmen. They're always there to help me, help me get better. So it's a great experience. And then Terrence, obviously opposite side of the ball, but yeah. being one of the, the captains, being like a, a leader of this team with yeah. the young players, what kind of have you seen your role kind of grow in that aspect of things? Uh, I think with my role, it's just important like just being a good role model, but not only on the field, but off the field, you know. I want to just, you know, put an example for the guys that, like, you know, go to class, do well in the class, uh, classroom, you know. Just be a good person. So it's a lot bigger than just on the field. I mean, a lot of the freshmen are super talented, and you can see that, and a lot of them are making an impact, such as Ian. <laughs> yeah, two sacks in the game yeah. as well. A, a great game for you. Terrence, I want to quickly talk, because you all season long have been able to Wear that, that yellow band on, uh -huh. and, and it, it means something special to you. So yes. I want to give you a chance to kind mm -hmm. of explain what it means to the people who might not know. Yeah, so I wear the yellow. I mean, it's yellow turf tape, and I wear like a yellow mouthpiece. But the reason behind that is, so my youngest brother, uh, Hayden, he has spina bifida. And pretty much for people that don't know what that is, it's like he was born like his spine was messed up and stuff like that. So like his legs are like a little bit like jagged and stuff. So like... It's kind of, it's, it's hard for him to walk and stuff like that. And like, the craziest part is like, when he was born, he wasn't even supposed to like, he, they, the doctor said he was supposed to pretty much be like a vegetable. So, I mean, I don't know. He's like a big inspiration for me. And like, 
he he wrestles and plays football and like tries his hardest and like just works hard. So like I don't know, it's just cool to see him like out there, you know, still like even though with the limits he has, he you know, he still like goes after him. I just like I just admire that in him, so I just try to represent him as much as I can. Yeah, and you, you do a great job, and definitely a, a great job this week oh, yeah, for, thank you. for your brother. This week, uh, obviously the schedule gets moved up a bit because the game yeah. is on Friday. So what then at practices this week, knowing that you have one less day to really prepare, how does that kind of affect your mindset for the week? Uh, I just, I mean, it puts a little bit of pressure on everyone, but I mean, I think the guys know, like, you know, the situation that we're in. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a playoff game this Friday, and the reality is, like, this is a winner go home. I mean, if we want to make the championship and get there, you know, this this game, you know, we, we got to win. If you lose this one, unfortunately, you're out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's it's a playoff game. Hey, you just got to come into each practice focused, working hard. And it's, we know who they are. They're Army. So we just got to keep working towards that. So what has been kind of – Obviously, it's it's early. It's Monday when we're we're filming this, so maybe not a real full chance to break down uh, what to expect. But what are some of the things that you guys are going to have to key on to find success against a team that has been extremely good historically and yeah. extremely good this year? I think just you know stick to the basics. I mean, take care of the football. Like we can't turn the ball over. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot. This past week, we had a ton of penalties. So mm -hmm. we just got to be disciplined. I mean, granted, Army. Very disciplined football team. You know, they have a little bit different routine than we do. But we just got to, I think, just play our game and don't let the moment get too big for us. We just got to get out there and play our game, and I think we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And from the defense? I'd say, as like a defense, just got to read our keys, make sure don't get, like, over-pursued. Don't get, like, don't try just to make a big play. Just got to limit everything and don't. Just stay focused. Should be a, a fun one, as you said. Yeah, it is a, it is a playoff game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, Best of luck, and, and thank you both so much for taking the time and stopping by. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And Sidelines continues after this. Do not go anywhere. It's all part of Mother Nature's perfect blend, the keystone of the Keystone State. Visit Potter Tioga, a two-county scenic outdoor haven, conveniently located, yet worlds apart. A place where you can kick back, unwind, and forget about the pressures of life. Disconnect and reconnect with your friends, family, or even yourself while surrounded by nature's beauty. So start planning your adventures today at visitpottertioga.com. Welcome back to Sidelines. Let's talk field hockey now. As joining me here at the desk, we have Lota Dams and Alex Esterling. Thank you both so much for stopping by. Thank you for having us. So let's go back this past week and let's start on Wednesday. It was a high scoring affair against Slippery Rock. Uh, talk me through this, this game. What led to the success before we break down the historic day mm -hmm. that you had? Uh, talk me through what were the things that led to success in this game? Um, I knew that we were going to come out hungry that game because mm -hmm. we had lost to them uh, last season and we needed to get our first conference win. Mm -hmm. So I think we definitely prepared and we went hard that week in practice going into Wednesday. So that was a big part. And what did you see from that game? Um, well, I liked it very much because everyone has a lot of energy and was willing to fight for it. And, well, we won. So. <laughs> So obviously four goals in that game for you ties the record. And we had talked about it right after the broadcast, yeah. but it was it's kind of special that the, the, the record you tied was at Terrence Willie, who you had an opportunity to meet for the yeah. very first time the week before. So uh, again, what was just so special about the fact that you know it was her record who you had just met? Well, it was so ironic because, one, I actually didn't know that that was happening until um, you guys said it at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was, like, 
cool news. And honestly, when it was her that I tied, I was like, oh my gosh, we just, we literally sat together. Well, we didn't actually sit together, but we were talking and she, when she left, she was like, well, you're next. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I didn't know that she had four goals in a game, which was like the record, but it's so cool to tie her. It was, it was really fun. Hey, she wasn't kidding about yeah. your next, the very next game, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, that, that, that you got to play at home. But when, when you see a teammate who's, who's thriving off, off of a day where she gets four goals, what does that do for the confidence for you guys and the, the rest of the team? Um, well, I think because Alex scored so much, everyone was, like, hyped up and willing to, like, score more. And, well, 5-0 is a pretty good score. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll absolutely yeah. take take that score. Let's uh, switch gears then go kind of towards Saturday. It was a, a really good opponent in, in that one, another ranked battle mm -hmm. back and forth, and we'll get back to the ranking in a moment. But the ranked battle there, that first half, Luther finally breaking <laughs> through and getting that goal. What – Talk me through your goal, your first one on the, your career. Um, well, I was really happy and went in because um, I've been like really frustrated the mm -hmm. last few games because it was every time I was so close and it wasn't just that. But when I scored, I got more energy and I was willing to like score more. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but I played a good game. So, but to to finally be able to kind of get that breakthrough that you've been kind of frustrated for, mm -hmm. as you just said, what does that do, kind of? You think for your confidence moving forward it goes up like mm -hmm. really so it's it was a relief when I scored and I'm hoping next game I'll score too and then uh, going into the half you have the lead what was kind of set at halftime getting ready for that second half before you kind of break down that second half well we wanted we came out with fire which was mm -hmm. great because that's how like we been talking about how we should be going into every single game especially because it's Shippensburg we mm -hmm. faced them before the season so we knew what we had to bring to the table if we wanted to walk away with the win mm -hmm. um we didn't we really did fall off the second half mm -hmm. like the first quarter was great second quarter it was still good um that's when they scored i think then it started becoming more neck and neck which mm -hmm. is great competition obviously but i mean truthfully we we fell under pressure i mean mm -hmm. they they got a hold of it and shut us down mm -hmm. and I mean, it would have been a different game if we showed up the second half like we showed up for the first. So then, to that point, what is kind of that, that switch that has to be flipped? Or what is the key to, to keeping that momentum and, and keeping that, that process and the foot on the gas kind of thing? Well, we're going to need – we always say this, and it's always like we need to show up for the full game, not just half of it, the beginning of it, the end of it. Normally, it's the end of it, if anything, and mm -hmm. it's like now we're playing catch-up. Um, but we have more conference games and even Wednesday like if we want to beat Frostburg then we have to like there's no letting up there's just none and that's what everyone has to know so so let's go back to obviously a, getting a number by uh, your name and in, in the team getting that ranking how did that feel to since your freshman year was the last time there was a number and this one is a little bit mm -hmm. higher than that number yeah. so what does that feel to to be a part of it feels great and i think it fuels us i know a lot of the younger girls well actually everyone but my class it's our, it's their first time getting ranked mm -hmm. we're similar because it, i was a freshman also when we first got ranked in my time being here this time is different though it feels more special i feel like we're not it, sometimes it doesn't feel like we're taking away a win because like we're facing these teams, we're losing to IUP one nothing, you know, we're we're tying and then losing in overtime. Mm -hmm. So when we got ranked, I think it was like a bit of relief. Like we've worked our butts off to get here, so now it's finally being shown to the PSAC that like we are that good. But in order to keep that number and get higher, we need to continue to win games now because it's so equal in the PSAC right now. It's crazy. So, mm -hmm. And then from your perspective, coming in this as your first year, being able to be part of a team that gets ranked, what is that for you? Well, I never experienced something like this. It's, it's just a different thing back home, but it's really cool. Like, everyone was so happy. Mm -hmm. It was sending to group me, right? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, my God, we made it. So yeah. it was nice. Actually, to that point, Obviously, you are in a, a different situation than really everyone else on the team. Maybe, maybe Hannah can relate in the mm. fact that you got across a border, but her border is a lot closer than your border <laughs> yeah. is. So what has that kind of transition and, and life change really mm. has that been for you this year? Well, it was a big decision to make, but I really love field hockey. So mm -hmm. that was like 
a quick decision, but it was really different. I had to get used to like the field and how we play. So I'm just I'm still adjusting, but I really like it. So. And then, kind of, what do you guys have to do to know that that Luta has a long way away from home? Granted, you're not really close yeah, to home I for would you really yourself. Yeah, I consider me, but, but compared to others, I mean, <laughs> comparatively, not much. But but having somewhat of an experience with that, the fact that you're playing out of state and and have a bit of a travel, home is not right yeah. in the backyard. What can you kind of do, and what have you done for Luta to try and ease that transition, so to speak? Well, the transition from anywhere to college is like a big step in itself but my freshman year personally I was really homesick like mm -hmm. I told myself I wouldn't go further than like an hour away because like I wanted to play field hockey but like I wasn't like that coach always goes through the whole like fate and like <laughs> but she's gonna laugh at me for saying this but I mean truthfully like field hockey keeps you on the grind like mm -hmm. it's so scheduled we are in so much of like a core routine that like it almost helps the transition like yeah, there's time to be sad, like, when you're alone, like, I miss home, this is so different, but, like, it's like, okay, we got brunch at 10 o'clock, then we got <laughs> practice at 11, so wait, then we have team bonding at 11.30, so there's, like, no time to, like, really sit and dwell on your thoughts, like, we're constantly on the go, and there's, like, always something to work for, so I think that makes it easier. Yeah, being on a schedule yeah. kind of makes things yeah. a lot yeah. easier. In preseason, it was just so busy every yeah. time we had something to do. Always. It keeps in mind, yeah, that's a, that's a good <laughs> thing. So let's quickly look for this week. Uh, a non-conference opponent uh, this Wednesday. So what are kind of some of the things you really want to focus on in that game to prepare you then for the upcoming conference slate once again? There's no taking them lightly because PSAC is like upset after upset. Some you wouldn't even consider an upset, but I think it's honestly shocking to like see some of these teams like coming out on top. I mean, Frostburg beat Millersville and Millersville has like always been like a top contender, like top five always. So to see that, it's like, well, there's no time to like take any plays off. Plus, we're going to ESU, so yeah. that's mm -hmm. even bigger. So, yeah. yeah, I agree on that. All right, and then let's, I mean, jump right to that. Obviously, you don't want to, as you just said, don't want to jump past Wednesday, but knowing that you got another tough road contest on the road against another team with a number by <laughs> their mm -hmm. name, what is going to be the key to try and, as you guys are saying, play that complete game? We're going to have to work all all week at practice. I think we really did last week. We we focused on things that we really needed to work on for specific games. Mm -hmm. But now that it's like coming down to like legit, like who's going to get ranked and who's going to make playoffs, like mm -hmm. we're really just going to have to work together on specific things. I mean, I know coach has like what we really need to do, but as as long as we work hard and we keep an open mind, like anyone's in it. So I just no one should really worry yet. I th I think it'll be okay. Yeah, we have a really good mindset, I think. We all want to win, but we just have to work during the whole game, and that's, like, the hard part. Should be a fun week ahead, and mm -hmm. thank you both so much for taking the time and stopping by. Thank you. And Sidelines continues after this. Do not go anywhere. Pride and passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. Let's now give you a special inside look at one of our student coaches here at Mansfield for our sprint football team, Holden Myers, as we go inside the mind of Myers.
that's going to do it for us, folks. To stay up to date on all things Mansfield Athletics, head over to GoMounties.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.